üks täie mõistuse juures olev inimene ju ei läheks ometigi Tartusse dokumentaalfilmi medalist tegema. Tartu is the second largest city in Estonia and can look upon a rich past. Historically, it was occupied by several foreign powers, as was Tallinn. From the Hanseatic League to the Russian Empire, from Nazi Germany to being declared a closed town during the Soviet era, Tartu lived through a lot before restoring independence. After 1991, the city started to prosper once again and is today a vibrant hotspot of cultural life with around 100,000 inhabitants. Tartu is also home to the oldest university of Estonia with over 15,000 students and is furthermore known for its several bridges over the river Emajugi, which splits the city into two major parts. Harboring the Estonian National and Literature Museum, as well as the impressive old town and its picturesque city council, the city was rightfully elected to be the European Capital of Culture in 2024. Unbeknown to the broad public, Tartu, just as Tallinn, or the infamous Pulva scene, became a hotspot of metal and rock underground that started to evolve rather quickly and provided another important cultural asset. If you give people space, equipment and a vision, things pretty much evolve by themselves. Metal music started to spread. Mina alustasin oma nii-öelda metali karjääri siis 90-ndate 97-98 niimoodi ma hakkasin käima esimestel festivalidel, mis meil siin Eestis korraldati. Alguses ma olin seal täiesti tundmatu tegelane, aga siis tutvusin kohe lähiümbruskonna poistega. Seal ulgas ka siis Martiniga ja kõige teiste põlvaamadega, siis me hakkasime koos käima. Ja 90-tatel oli see asi kuidagi, see oli sõikene päris suur liikumine meil muusul. Ja tänapäeval rohkem ma päris sellised asju näinud ei ole, et me olime nagu kõik olid sellised hästi kokkuidud, noh, muidugi meil ei olnud internet ega mitte midagi, siis ma ei tea, kuidas ma oma veel suhtesin. Me teadsime, kus iga üks elab ja sai inimestele lihtsalt ukse taha mindud. Info liikus kõdagi, et keegi kuskilt midagi kuulis, midagi toimub, siis see levis nagu väga kiiresti meil sõpruskonna vahel, et nüüd tuleb mingisugune konsert kuskil. We called it Kruusauk, the gravel hole. Because we came here in 1999, that means, but this place was run a few years before. I re I really don't know how how this contract came to be, but uh, something like uh, from the municipality and then stuff like that, uh, youth work, whatever. Põhimõtteliselt ja Kruusauk oli sõikene legendaarne, et noh, sellel hetkel ma elasin põlvas ja me käisime rongidega sõitsime sinna ja et noh, mm -hmm. nagu terve rong oli rahvas täis, noh, et Eesti. vanasti oli põlvas oli nagu hästi suur skeena, et noh, mm -hmm. noh. Põhimõtteliselt, kui põlva nagu kuhugi kohale läks, siis varjutas nagu kõik teised ära seal. Et Tallinna, Pärnoomad, näed. Meil oli nii suur, suur, suur kogukond oli. Et, ähm, festivalid põhiliselt toimusid siis oliti kas Pärnus, Tallinnas põhiliselt seal 2000. alguses. Siis oli ka, et äh, me rentisime siis tavaliselt pussi. Noh, 45 inimest poolt nagu mingi probleem nagu pussi panna. Katra, or just Kruusauk, starting out merely as a gravel pit with some wooden cabins owned by Tartu municipality, 
is one of the places that could be called a birthplace of the tattoo metal scene. Combining party location, rehearsal room and recording studio all in one, welcoming basically anyone who shared the vision and was willing to pay part of the rent. This opened up many opportunities. Bands like Metzadöl and Loitz played there, who would later go on to become influential names in and around Estonia, as well as countless smaller projects, which tragically would never be seen by a larger audience. Our first guitarist was playing uh, in a black metal band called Tarpat, I guess, yeah. And he was uh, uh, he was part of this uh, this this community here, and um, he was playing with a guy who had the contract with the city, <laughs> or something like that. I, I I I really don't remember. It's 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 pretty funny, and um, uh, for a while uh, we had all our equipment here, and um, the place uh, just came like a. Um, uh, I'll say it. Everyone just could call me and say, "Oh, we want to have a party. Put up your or equipment, and we just like could have fun." It was like all the youth was was gathering here, and uh, yeah, there were, I think they had some problems with the police too. They called me. <laughs> I, I I don't even think we paid anything to. Uh, to the city or or the or the water company, we just had to pay for electricity. Um, I was uh, I remember I was collecting the money like a fucking you know this uh, enforcer <laughs> from all the band members and then all the band's members like you know it's uh, it's uh, one thousand crowns now for electricity. We were going through that through the damn city and oh 20 from you 25 from you <laughs> uh, it was it was it was a new essence but uh, so I, I don't even I don't even remember how it uh, came to be that that I was responsible but somehow it just came to be I don't know today Katra is just an overgrown meadow with some concrete base plates that don't give the slightest hint about the spot that once helped to kick off the Tartu scene but as mentioned earlier People will create their own spaces if there aren't any. Palutoitsi is the name of a farm some kilometers away from Tartu where the infamous Lilak brothers used to organize several underground concerts with the name Kurista Kurimusikka. Tartu bands were joined by Tallinn-based projects such as Syngahel to connect the two separated scenes in Estonia and strengthen the local community. I made a few festivals here in this uh, farm. Basically all the fans came together and we are, were playing to each other and a few friends that were invited. And uh, usually we also invited some bands from uh, abroad. <laughs> Tallinn, of course. <laughs> Tallinn and Tallinn, yes. Like, yeah. mm, uh, like yeah. friends uh, who were not in this circle of Berger's crea creational group, like creative group. And, and the first uh, gig happened in my bedroom when it was not uh, uh, built up back then. The next one was on this uh, porch over there. And the mm. third one was on the... Uh, underneath the roof, the second story.
In the past 30 years, the Tartu scene has built up some 50 plus metal projects, mainly in the death and black metal genre, but also incorporating folkish vibes, which are often found in the Estonian scene. Still, the members of the scene were and are very well aware of this image, and besides the stereotype of being a bit more off the grid, they are surprisingly experimental and progressive. Uh, this melodic black was made here, and all this um, folk death shit stuff was made in the, the northern parts of Estonia. The southern part was more melodic and more blacky, I would say. Not uh, dark throne blacky, but Timo Borger blacky. I find it actually quite interesting, like as a foreigner, like because there's so much uh, presence of these kind of folk-inspired, even like kind of pop bands like Trat Attack and uh, like mm, like yeah, with metal, like you know, folk Viking metal. But it still Estonia is like officially like quite a secular country. Which is a funny contrast. It's like kind of clinging into like old deities and stuff. Which Estonia has like uh, very, uh, I guess, what like shamanistic religions yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Very much based around spirits and stuff. And of course, there like a lot of people really identify more with the Norse and stuff. There's also the connections between the Norse mythology and like Estonian mythology. Yeah, Estonia really wants to be Nordic. Yeah, Estonia right? into Nordic. <laughs> you come up with uh, some kind of folkish tunes and instantly you feel like that's mess up then. let's move on and, and uh, trying to come up with uh, something new all the time and uh, if it sounds some something what is uh, too recognizable then we don't use that material the metal that we grew up with when we were in our teens, uh, in the early 2000s. Um, in Estonia it was ruled by uh, bands like Metsadel, Tarapita, Loits, bands like this, that weren't uh, as big as they are nowadays, but uh, very well known in the, in the scene. And uh, it was like um, somehow logical that we, uh, we also got some influence um, uh, from them that we wanted to do something similar in, a, in our own way. So I think that if uh, you're talking about this, this folkish uh, sounding Estonian metal thing, then, uh, then these bands and many others at that time um, kind of uh, set the foundation even to nowadays, uh, like for music metal world in Estonia. I think the folkish uh, wave was just one wave that threw over Estonia and uh, it was just uh, some examples that were made and somebody wanted to do the same thing. But uh, from Tartu, I think it's uh, just uh, more about the doing it more modern way. For example, we have Langenodar, you, uh, wanted to say that it's kind of folkish or using their folk language, but they are doing it a new modern way. Their sound, they use the modern things and uh, modern, modern uh, details and uh, they don't want to be the old school pagan band where they play sort of violin stuff, uh, not that uh, bad, but uh, uh, but they are do, uh, trying to so, do something new. Same with uh, like a form in Tartu, uh, the band. They are just uh, exactly what I like, uh, what they are doing, the finding the way that uh, when you want to see something ma magic or something, you always think about, uh, you know, wizards and stuff. But uh, you can see the same thing about the, you know, in the industrial area. It's, you just see something big, industrial, and you, when you cannot imagine how it's, it's built, then you can feel the magic. And in Tartu, they have discovered the way how to use that magic.
form is a good example of what happens if you mix some of the most active participants of a scene into a rather experimental metal band. The first release of the project, named Aerosols and Dust Particles, was used to create an audiovisual experience where the music was complemented by an exhibition of different art pieces set up in Genialisti de Globi. For me, it's strongly a visual uh, band. So it made sense us uh, not only to make it like um, a regular uh, uh, concert uh, uh, presentation, but to incorporate different uh, artists who have uh, similar taste uh, in visual styles and to uh, do something uh, totally different. I want the visitor to understand that uh, collapse that uh, many people are talking about is something much closer to them than they want to re realize. We tend to think that it is something that happens in the future when we are not making uh, some sort of decisions, uh, either political or uh, social or something to do with ourselves. But when we are looking deeper inside ourselves, then we find that the marks of collision and collapse and collision is basically already here. Concerning band dynamics, overall stereotypes between people of Tallinn and Tartu could also be observed in the scene. While Tallinn was said to be more serious in pursuit of their projects, Tartu was said to have rather slow, more idle, but surprisingly also more experimental approach. But, Uh, 90. lõpus, kui meil siin selline suure metali liikumine algas, no siis oligi, et uh, oligi põhimõttel seis oli, oli lõuna Eesti ja oli põhja Eesti. Et, ja seal oli mingisugune väikene kivi, seal oli õõruda, et uh, ei klappinud inimesed hästi oma ajal. Like, Tallinn is a much bigger scene and these, like in the modern times, it's like, you know, it's, it's evolved so much. It used to be also like really tight. Um, but these days, I think it's kind of fractured a bit more because, like, you know, uh, there, there was a bar, basically, that united everybody because it was, like, the only decent rock bar in Tallinn. And it's kind of the same thing with Tartu and Underground, but uh, in Tallinn they have Woodstock and in Tartu you have Underground. They're the places that play metal and shit. So every metalhead, every punk, skinhead, whatever, everybody who listens to rock is going to be there. And... Of course, that's where you meet other musicians and stuff, that's where, you know, you make friends and everybody starts their bands. And it used to be, like, also this, like, really tight scene where you had the thrash bands with the stoner bands, with the punk bands, with whatever, all mixed up, pl people playing in each other's bands. And then these days, I think, like, Tallinn's grown a bit more and, like, it kind of fractured into proper scenes almost. Like, still, there's still the camaraderie between everybody. Like, we all go to each other's gigs, because if we don't, nobody's going to be at the gig. <laughs> um, but Tartu is still, like, in that state, because it's much smaller. Like, uh, we have not grown out of that at all. Like, everything's still just... We need more musicians. We have too many bands and not enough musicians. Yeah. For most people here in Estonia, I'd say it's more like just a fun hobby to do, like, once or twice a week, instead of, like, actually you know, grinding the band and making good music. It's just like doing music because it's, I got nothing better to do. It's like the mentality of Estonia in my opinion, but really it should be that you want to make music and you want to make good music, which is kind of lacking in the scene, in my opinion. Of course, there are really good bands who really, really practice their instruments and can play. <coughs> well, the overall mentality between the Tallinn and the Tartu and the rest of the Estonia is that the Tallinn, the, the people are always very busy and in, uh, in Tartu and other <laughs> countryside <laughs> the people are more relaxed I guess and uh, I tend to think that we do these things, uh, what we do, much more for the fun or for our self uh, gratification, <laughs> mm -hmm. so to say, but uh, they have uh, some bands in Tallinn, they are very like uh, stricter, making uh, uh, lots of records in quite a short time, 
compared to us. <laughs> but uh, I guess they are more serious as well in some ways. I can't uh, uh, like um, general uh, say it, uh, this to all bands and members, but uh, I think that generally it, uh, it is so. And of course, yes, uh, Estonian history, the historical reasons are the main reasons why the people are like they are. They're kind of like cautious around st strangers, you know. Um, it has a... I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the Russians, uh, like, let's say the Russian media is, is oftenly calling uh, Estonians uh, Nazis, you know, because uh, the, there is some type of nationalism, uh, but it's it's more like this that we have been uh, not not we literally. I mean, no one alive, but you know, Estonian history has been always the same. That uh, there has been some uh, other like countries or forces uh, kind of like ending up invading us, and then. There is like always this uh, work for someone else, do it for someone else, and you know, even like with this uh, European Union, you feel the same. You're doing it for someone else, you know, all the time, and uh, it's been a case all the time, and uh, and that's like why Estonian people feel like okay, there's always some trouble with this, you know, <laughs> don't trust a stranger thing. Um, it's because even though you know the people. They are not going to be like, oh, you you play some instrument, you play, uh, you do vocals, join our band. It's more like uh, they're skeptical and say like, yeah, you should come to our pergros. Uh, we have to say practice from and you ask like, yeah, when? Like, yeah, yes, sometime. But where is it? Like, oh yeah, you should come. Like, I don't know. Like it was not not very. I felt that. Uh, it takes some time uh, um, for. Yeah, like to be accepted. What happens if someone is involved in too many projects and stretches their limited energy too far? Some may see their music as more of a hobby and not something they wish to bring to a wider audience, while others have higher aspirations and visions, perhaps not shared by every member of their band. Coincidentally, bands who are considered famous in Estonia, like Metzadel and Loitz, seem to have maintained a rather stable lineup over the years, while not putting too much effort into side projects. Loitz and Trafita are actually not Tallinn bands uh, when they started. You know, it was uh, a bit different city where they started. Uh, we cannot talk about cities, so uh, we maybe think uh, where the people have moved after the, they grow up or something. But about Tartu bands, they just... Uh, they have been doing uh, that good music for like decades, but uh, I haven't seen the sparkle before to get the out from there, because they are just doing the thing what they love, but... Uh, I don't even know why why they haven't tried the they haven't tried to do something outside. Maybe it it may be small kind of smaller city pride that uh, they don't want to you know make it fake. To they don't want to go outside themselves. They wait for the invite or something. There's a lot of bands, like, I, I don't want to talk shit, but there's something, like, a lot of bands have a lot of potential, but there's something just holding them from doing that, you know? I yeah. don't know why. I often feel like they, it's like, um, they don't feel like putting in the proper um, effort of putting, like, quality shit. Quality, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's oft I mean, sure, I sound like a fucking hipster, asshole, elitist <laughs> prick, but... But we are. But, yeah, we are, sure. Gay keeper you are. Gay, gay keepers! Gay uh, creepers! <laughs> gay creepers, but... Uh, gay like, creepers. It often sounds like, you know, a lot, a lot of sort of second-hand riffs get thrown together, and... Mm. It's like, you can hear that band, it's like, oh, that's the Pantera band, and oh, there's that Metallica <laughs> band over there, and like... It's like, come on, you can mix all this shit together and make something new, you know? <laughs> Usually when the band uh, releases the first album, then... Uh, they have uh, reached a certain limit. They have to do this um, uh, much uh, rehearsals, this many gigs, and so on. 
and uh, for the most of the band members it's uh, a bit too much I think and for the leaders it's like let's put more fire uh, to the engine and uh, let's keep on going and and usually those who don't have so much time are starting to fall off. They could have quite a um, nice future in music world but uh, the um, people are used to thought I don't get anywhere anyway. When big bands come to Estonia they like 99.9% .9 of the time only play in Tallinn. Like the only exception I can make right now is Metallica who was in Tartu a few years ago and that's really pretty much the only big band that's ever played in Tartu in my opinion. Making music in like Tartu for example is pretty much just making okay music and then playing in front of the same 20 drunk dudes for as long as you make the band really. It's not like you start small and get big, you start small, you are small and you end it small. While filming Tallinn Under the Horns, we have seen similarities like the same artists playing in many bands, often mutually in each other's projects. The need to stick together and share limited space, instruments and ideas provided an important boost to the scene initially, but it came with a dark legacy. A closed and promiscuous circle of people, supposedly not trying to reach out further to other scenes because they are satisfied with their output. promiscuous need to do bands with all uh, the people in the scene and you want to play with this guy and that guy mm -hmm. and uh, have fun uh, and this is why so many different uh, bands and lineups are being formed without really any definite results. That member is from that band, that member is from that band Again, that member's from that band, that member's from that band, that band, that member's also from that band, and that mem it's, it's just a whole spider web. So I'd say, like, in, in Tartu at least, I think there are like five, six dudes who manage the whole scene. The sun, because uh, I make bands only with my <laughs> brothers and <laughs> clo close people as such. Uh, so our goal is not to get successful, but to just uh, produce great music. Still, even in this small country, rivalry and fabricated beef between bands and towns was and is an important part of the scene. It rarely persists, of course, as everyone understands that basically all bands are intertwined and the Estonian scene needs to support each other. Like, we were making these jokes about, like, this, like, you know, in the 90s and shit you had all these like rival black metal and thrash metal bands and shit who were like oh fuck you it's like it's like gangsta rap you know oh like, yeah like <laughs> literally one of the things that uh, got me and uh, Kroksatur to form uh, uh, Sigurnhorn was to create this sort of artificial uh, uh, rivalry. rivalry with the band Sunkehild. It's like, yeah, just we're to like totally dethrone them. them. Yeah, it's like, ah! Dethrone the only goat metal band in Estonia. Yeah, they're and not now the only goat metal as well. Yeah, but yeah. that's the same ah, singer. Yeah, it's the same guy. It's yeah. the same guy. Same, same, guy, same guy, yeah. guy behind both projects. The goat's magma. Yeah. But at the same time, we are like, there is no bad big, big gap or bad blood yes, uh, between the two scenes. For example, the Tallinn bands uh, Süngahel and it have uh, played right here in Kurista uh, in our like uh, black metal Bergerus summer days. And we are generally quite in quite good terms with yeah. them. They invite yeah. us to Tallinn, they come to Tartu to play and uh, it's like without each other the sea in, in Estonia would be so much poorer, definitely. And also there is like a third uh, scene which is uh, smaller, but it's in Pulva, like uh, in the southeast Estonia, because of the few uh, really f fanatic... Like, like three, three members or four <laughs> members that yes. make this scene, but they have a lot of records produced. Oh yes, yeah. yeah we started to take an even closer look into the band history of Tartu. 
Researching the evolution of the bands, one could tell a lot of bands were rather short-lived. Bands split up fast, or went into an indefinite hibernation, often before any mentionable outputs beyond demos or EPs were generated. As bands sharing the same interests and even band members, naturally, it didn't take long for them to set up something larger than themselves. The Pergorus Collective was born and the so-called Tarbathian scene was established. Koilet, uh, the drummer of Langenu, had the drums and uh, there was... First there was Arthur from Mortferos, I think, who had uh, guitar, uh, amp and... Uh, and remember, uh, Carl bought like a bass amp, this uh, Mark bass, quite nice one, uh, and he was from Ulgorend. Uh, yeah, and uh, so we kind of like everyone who could, uh, who had something or, or just uh, bought something, so we used this. And uh, later on, well, as I had op opportunities uh, and, and someone else who had, like they could chip in and we kind of like just got what we needed uh, time over time and and yeah, most of my uh, seller at some point went also <laughs> into this. Uh, there was a point where, uh, when we all used the same uh, rehearsing place in uh, Anne, Anne Street and that was a uh, cellar with uh, low ceilings and uh, we just thought maybe we should give a name on it how, how do, do we call this collective the scene this uh, order if you say and uh, and we came up this Bergerus uh, I actually invented this name by kind of mixing with the fiddling with the band names and the starts and ends and kind of like put this together <laughs> uh, doesn't mean anything but sounds kind of uh, you know maybe I don't know, interesting uh, maybe mythical I don't know it's something <laughs> We felt everybody was on the same page concerning the challenges which the small scene of Tartu faces. One of the approaches to deal with said challenges is to dig into different music genres as well as incorporating other fields of art. As the Pergorus Collective grew, the infrastructure complementing and advancing the music also took off with Pergorus Studio. For me, Bergerus, uh, I asked uh, the guys I want to uh, start uh, the studio thing. Uh, I wrote uh, a business plan for, you know, Estonian government uh, gives you some kind of uh, starting capital when you uh, are able to explain what are you going to do with that money. And, uh, and I needed the name. And I th thought uh, to help with my knowledge, uh, Tartu, Tartu Skin uh, on studio thing. That the studio is quite fresh. I started it uh, about um, from now. It's two years ago, and uh, and I had to uh, move once. So that meant that I had to uh, rebuild all the thing up again and uh, I don't actually if some band wants to record here I don't mind what uh, style they're doing uh, I'm coming from school where uh, classical music was uh, main thing and that uh, I'm comfortable with almost any kind of music uh, but uh, I like to be uh, more involved with the metal music and uh, I when uh, there was a Tarbatian sp split uh, uh, making then I uh, tried to uh, tell guys uh, that uh, you can come here if you don't want to uh, use me then you can use my gear or whatever but everybody tried to and wanted to do that themselves and that that was also fine. Yeah.
while harvesting energy to boost the metal scene, the connections also helped other projects, like Autosexuality. We basically combine uh, like our poetry written in Estonian with the music we write in English. We also have a song in Italian, and um, and it's kind of it's rock mixed with alternative rock, punk, and a bit of jazz and um, and kind of progressive rock, I would say as well, and and a little bit of metal as well because like our drummer used to be a metal drummer and our bass player is also has been in a metal band and I am in a metal band so we kind of came together from the metal community and we just everything that we do has a hint of metal in it so, so we can't really get past that so I was like yeah whatever I'll do a metal band I, I never listened to metal really like that much I was more into like punk rock and like a bit on the heavier side but not like at the very far end of like black metal or something anything like that so yeah i just met up with the guys i had like one or two practices with them and i was already out doing a gig with them <laughs> and the one song it was super fun and uh yeah i've been in the band ever since and now i'm and like at first what had to be what was supposed to be kind of like a one song project ended up with me being in the band and now we released an album and I'm on two songs, I think. Yeah, I do two songs there. And and yeah, on the Tarbathian project as well, there are my vocals on it as well. Lilak, member of Langano, Sworn, Ulgurand and Ziegenhorn, also works at the National Museum in Tartu and contributes to the preservation and research of Estonian culture and history. Langano, a project involving all three Lilak brothers, is planning to produce a release using a rare dialect of the Estonian language that only has around 12,000 speakers left. The new mini-album of Langano uh, will uh, be entirely in Seto language. It's a, a language, or a, some say a dialect of Estonian, spoken in southeast Estonia. Like about 10 or 12,000 people uh, spoke it. Since like um, me and my brothers uh, also have roots from this region, so it only felt natural to uh, to add like se several pieces from our lives and our identities. Uh, together, like one, on one hand, we put this uh, uh, old roots, the old tradition of our culture, and the, uh, on the other hand, it's very um, aggressive metal. Um, so far, this language, Seto language, has been mainly uh, used for like everyday sp uh, spe uh, speech or like for everyday talk, but also uh, for um, like the folk singing. There are some like rock bands uh, and some like uh, modern approaches, some punk uh, music uh, done in this language, but it um, felt interesting to uh, create like more darker lyrics in this language using the, the beauty and the opportunities of uh, this particular language because you cannot translate uh, like something to another language without something getting lost in between. So like, uh, how would it feel to have the lyrics originally in this language? It's a totally new thing to us, and, but it's very interesting. The piece of the, uh, these like, small uh, cultures is that you um, always feel that something may 
be lost in times. So, uh, so uh, doing this, what we do, uh, putting this language into uh, into black metal, definitely helps to like expand its use. In addition to expanding the musical horizon, the Icelander Skad Valdur has helped give the scene a more professional appearance. He created logos for at least half of the bands in Tartu, and his professional artwork made shirts and CDs look better than ever before. Some 30 kilometers south of Tartu, Gavliku Brewery ties music to another art form, which most likely was never meant to be separated from metal in the first place, beer. The brewery is famous for its product, brewing style and craft beer, and has already won several awards. The Kavliku Beer Camp and Rock and Roll Festival, an annual event with metal roots, is going into its fifth year and has hosted some of the most important Estonian bands. The festival blends music and beer in a special environment, yet with a strong urge to remain committed to quality on the underground, instead of emphasizing growth. Algselt see idee Kaspeski kuulu selle pärast välja, et kui me erinevatel festivalidel tahtsime minna oma õlletelgiga välja ja õlut neile pakkuma, siis paljudest kohtades meil ei öelda ära. Nii siis meil küpseski mingi hetk peas plaan, et teeme oma festivali ja kutsume inimesed siia õlut pakkuma, kes meile meeldivad ja kuna meile meeldib ka muusika, siis kutsume bändid ka kohale. No festival on nüüd siia maani kasvanud, et mitte meie ei peanam vaid bände otsima, vaid bändid leiavad meid juba üles. Ise nad küsivad, et kuulad, kas me saaksime esineda teie üles siin ja et noh, peame juba ise valima siis, et kes siis saab ja kes ei saa ja. Voolu jama kuskil kellegil lööb välja, siis on vaja kiiresti tegeleda sükkas asjadega. Aga muidu enamusfestivali on korraldatud enne festivali juba Kui nüüd rahva arvust rääkida, siis esimesel aastal me tõmbasime punase joone maha tuhat inimest ja rohkem siia festivali inimese ei tule. No ma ise ei taha kuidagi seda asja reklaamida, eks inimesed inimesed ise otsustavad. Eriti esiteks, kui nad meie õlud maitsevad, nemad otsustavad, kuidas see on. Noh, mina võin muidugi öelda, et nagu kõik on väga hea. Noh, festival meil on juba väga hea, et inimeste tagas side põhjal on seda nagu näha. See aasta me korraldasime festivali neljandat korda. Järgmine aasta on meil väikene juubel viies. After processing everything we heard so far, the isolation of Estonian bands felt like it was mostly self-inflicted. Our pride and bias is against strangers holding bands back from applying at foreign festivals or from crossing their borders and venturing further than Finland or other Baltic countries. Could the previous generations that were influenced by the Soviet occupation also still have an impact on the evolution of the scene? A special university in Tartu brings fresh blood into the scene naturally, like Krugsader a couple of years ago. Also people like Ingmar Azoja from Tho Shell of Death and organizer of Halls of Winter Festival in Tallinn try to reach out to support the Estonian scene in their unique way and attempt to build new alliances throughout Europe. Ingmar's band, as well as Ziegenhorn, played abroad already and contacts, especially into the German-speaking scene, were created. Well, there's a lot of great bands here that, if you dig a bit deeper into them, you will find them, but no one elsewhere knows about them. And especially in Tartu, it's like even like a sub scene. Like in Tallinn, um, everyone knows all the bands in Tallinn, but Tartu, like if you ask people, they may name five bands tops. And uh, so I had this uh, conversation with this uh, young guy, and uh, he's a great musician and everything. And I asked him, like, oh, what bands in Tartu do you know? And he told me, like, well, Tartu doesn't have good bands, they're all shit. There's only two good bands, and, but it's enough, basically. 
and it made me a bit angry because it, it wasn't the first time I've heard something similar from someone from Tallinn and uh, I was like, let's change that. Uh, maybe they have discovered themselves that they are doing the right thing and they should not do it only for themselves. But they were shown something or some outsider came in and told them you are doing the right thing, you should do it more. And uh, that uh, may be the kind of uh, the trigger to change the scene a bit. But uh, the scene itself didn't change, it just improved or moved forward. Because the scene a little bit needs diversity, because it's gonna get boring if all the bands play the same music. It's like, I think, why Skullfuck is so popular is that they brought a completely new thing to Estonia. I don't, I'm not really sure if there even has ever been like a proper speed metal band in Estonia, or at least like the last 30 years of when we have been independent. I, I love him and I hate him because he um, he brings a different, like I think that that's kind of the thing why I like Valdia. Like I'm not Estonian personally, I'm American and he's Icelandic and we see things from a really different perspective in the Estonian metal scene. Like Patrick, yeah, he brought like a really different um, like uh, attitude. The influence from uh, foreigners, I think, is mostly like what Patrick and uh, Valdi have achieved here within like, I'd say two years. It's almost the same as the whole uh, Tartu scene in 20 years, or they have even done more, to be honest. It happened quite uh, at the same time. I mean, uh, an uh, Icelandic guy uh, and, and a German guy, <laughs> from Scotland and uh, Norway or whatever, where hasn't he been? <laughs> uh, called Kraxater, uh, the other, uh, the Icelandic guy, uh, Skalvaldur, uh, his art is great, actually, check it out. Um, and they, they came at some point uh, to Estonia to study here. Uh, they, they see the opportunities, it's like, it's, it's, it's when you come from afar, you come to a place and then you will kind of see everything that uh, no one is noticing uh, when they are in the in the thing like inside uh, and that uh, they they came and saw that okay you have all these things going on here and they felt uh, like uh, immediately how they can like do something they would just thought of okay let's make this kind of band they found uh, they found Ausin who is like a great drummer and uh, uh, from Ugurant and uh, they made some other bands, uh, namely uh, uh, Skullfuck and, and the other was Siegenhorn. And, and the influence was uh, that uh, stuff started to move quite rapidly, actually, you know, uh, compared to our usual slow pace. <laughs> and that was all Kraxater's uh, idea who, who came and, and made Siegenhorn here and then, like, had such an energy with this, you know. Today Pergorus is meeting point, creative hub and rehearsal room in a rather unsuspecting industrial complex near the city core. Here most of the things that happen in Tartu are shaped, revised and put out. A true milestone in recent history was Tarbathian Fortress, a compilation CD of Pergorus and other bands in the local scene. Well actually like another reason why I wanted to like all the songs that are on the CD were new so they like I went to every band and said like do you have a song that it must be a good one um, that you can contribute and I said like hey, actually this song like it doesn't fit on the album it's different and uh, some some did like some different ones and so basically like I wanted them to record and because I was also seeing that you have quite a few bands but when did the last album actually come out and so I was saying, thinking that if I can show them, like, do it with one song, just one song, the whole process, from the start to the finish, and now you know how it works. And, like, my, like, this was, like, also, like, an idea that I had, and I was hoping that, like, it will take off, that, like, the bands have now, like, the self-esteem, like, oh, actually, it's not so difficult to record and, like, to, to go through the whole process. Um, because I was so surprised that we managed to do the whole split in four months. 
like if you imagine like there were nine bands, there were 20 people involved, there were like six people uh, mixing, like two people did mastering. It's, it's crazy how many people are involved there. And I know that like even like uh, we, we had an album, it took two years to record. Like how does this even like work? I was really surprised. And uh, maybe it had an impact because now people see that yes, they are capable of something. And I think also another important fact is the, uh, that they see they can have an impact. Because before, like if an Estonian band releases something, it disappears. I mean, you usually, yeah, you have some, some labels here, but like even then, like uh, some Estonians don't even like understand, oh, there, there was something released. And when you don't get appreciation as a band, you don't have, um, you don't have the drive to actually continue. And uh, so I wanted to say like, uh, on, like change it and say like, okay, like try to get something done, be proud of it, and now go and work on it. And you see that actually some of the bands um, are working now on new material. Uh, some have unfortunately split up, but that's another thing I really like about Tartu. It's like, yeah, a band has split up, which was like Coffin, which is, like, in my opinion, like one of the best bands that came out as scene. Unfortunately, they only produced a demo, but the people that made it are still in the scene. And now they're just like doing something different. So like there will be a new band, but the whole potential is still kept in the scene. It doesn't die out because uh, there's three people, like usually you have three people in the scene who are the main uh, protagonists and uh, when one of them says like, oh, I don't want it anymore, the whole scene dies out. And uh, luckily this is not the case here. <laughs> How to define success? We don't allow ourselves to impose an answer to this question, as any answer is highly subjective. For some, success means filling huge venues, producing record after record and becoming known by millions. For others, it's just creating music or art for its own sake, being recognized by a few and keeping mostly to themselves. Maybe thereby dodging the negative side effects of getting famous and having to produce mainstream music that loses its origins, creativity and fire. Tartu is still a young scene that was kicked off in the late 90s and is rapidly evolving, ongoing to this day. A lot of youngsters and people with ambition put their talent and energy into bands and connections to make an impact in the Tartu metal scene. An ever-changing picture with people coming and going. Projects being formed, reshaped and finally destroyed create a lot of potential and underground gems. If Warhorn and Pergorus continue their path and the events around Tartu like the Beer Camp, Punk and Roll Festival and clubs like Underground and Rock and Roll Club keep attracting more local and international visitors, Tartu's metal scene will thrive. As long as there are artists who put their head into continuing the story of the small underground scene and even more importantly, people willing to listen and to attend these events in South Estonia, there will be underground art. <laughs> Sit down, son!